Hi guys, today I want to show you some uh, 3D action using a professional Excel Graphics Eclipse OpenGL video card released in uh, 1997. Usually this card was sold as a part of a professional workstation powered by Intel uh, Pentium Pro or DEC uh, Alpha CPUs. Anyway, if you really wanted one, you could get it for about $3,000 in uh, late 1997 and much cheaper uh, just one year later. Now let's uh, start our uh, system. The 2D part of this card is provided by Cyrus Logic using a uh, very common 2D chip like uh, CL5446. That's why as a 2D card it can be installed in Windows 95 and there are drivers even for Windows 3.11 but the 3D part is usable only under Windows NT4, the most common operating system for a workstation when this card was launched. There are no drivers for other operating systems. No problem, we can uh, still install Windows NT4 even on the latest hardware and uh, that's exactly what I did. Not to mention that Windows NT4 is even running in multiprocessor mode in, on an uh, Intel 13th gen CPU using an uh, Asus H610 motherboard with a classic uh, PCI slot. On a uh, such powerful configuration, obviously there is no uh, CPU bottleneck, but in the same time uh, there are not many games that will run in Windows NT4. Even if uh, Windows NT4 is uh, DirectX uh, compatible, uh, this is an uh, only OpenGL card, so only games with OpenGL rendering are uh, compatible, uh, theoretically. Let's see in practice. So let's start our testing with a much newer game that not many cards uh, designed in 1996-1997 can handle. I'm talking about Return to Castle Olfenstein from ID Software, a game released in uh, late uh, 2001. Well, uh, we do have an OpenGL compatible card with 16 uh, megabytes of RAM and the rest of the minimum requirements are uh, of course not a concern on this uh, configuration. I'm sure that this game can be played in uh, full screen, but this footage was taken like uh, two months ago. Now I have Windows 98 on this Intel 13th uh, gen configuration. I will put the card back and do some more uh, testing in a future video. Well, uh, if you ask me, the game uh, feels uh, pretty snappy. There are some missing textures, uh, but uh, we are playing uh, with a driver from 1998, uh, a late uh, 2001 game, so I think it's okay. Something tells me I shouldn't go back. Uh, now let's test uh, Quake 2, a game released in uh, late 1997. While uh, beta testing this game, John Carmack from ID Software said uh, that uh, this very card was the only one that can uh, handle well uh, Quake 2 OpenGL graphics. Yes, uh, this was a good card in 1997, better than a Voodoo 1, but in early 1998 you already could buy a Voodoo 2 which could uh, provide a double FPS at a much lower price. We get uh, about 30 FPS, but uh, now I see that the test was done at 32-bit uh, depth, which is not fair for a 1997 card, especially when compared with uh, Voodoo cards. This is uh, GL Quake. Here, are our uh, Axel uh, Graphics uh, Eclipse uh, is doing well with uh, over uh, 40 FPS in uh, demo one. Of 
for some reason the colors are looking a bit uh, washed out. I don't know why, since uh, back two is looking very good. And let's see what uh, exact FPS we get since the demo is done and we have a 43.2 FPS. I guess it's not bad. In the end, let's check another huge title from 1998, Half-Life, of course. Well, um, Half-Life is not working with this card when using OpenGL. This is a surprise since the drivers are from 1998 and uh, even if this is a professional card, they did tweak the driver to work with Quake 2. I know for sure since it's in the readme file of the driver. Anyway, we can play Half-Life with software rendering, but this is what we get under OpenGL. Not working. That's it for now. If you want to see more videos like this, please uh, let me know in the comments.